Hello, I'm Fred McNeil and you're watching QAC TV7. We've got a wonderful show that we've been calling in the past Commissioner's Corner. And we've had different commissioners come on, but we're going to change it now. Our strongest uh, candidate for the show has been Robert Bucky. Commissioner Bucky, thank you for coming on again. Good to see you, Fred. And we're going to call this Bucky's Report because you've been great. You've been here every week. You haven't missed. And you're enjoying it. And from what I hear from the public, they're enjoying the comments you're making. Absolutely. I'm, I, this show has been tremendous for me personally. It has, right. it has boosted my awareness to, to the citizens of the county. And they're, they're reaching out to me and Good. you know they're giving me information uh, you know some of its corrections as we'll talk about but 99% is positive well, this, this is fantastic I'm glad we're able to do this Good, and it's gonna be Bucky's report from now on Friday. Bucky's okay. report everybody right. now let's we've got a whole list of goodies to talk about yes. let's start it you wanted to make a correction on a budget statement you'd made before you said you'd like to clean it absolutely up a bit. Let's so start with that. my last meeting I had told you that economics ties into county Taxes. So right. more businesses we have, the less property taxes we pay. The overall budget of the county I had mentioned in 2006 was double, excuse me, I'm sorry, sorry. than what it was in 2014. Mm -hmm. That wasn't true. The 2006 budget was actually 94,000. 2014 budget was 118. I was actually referring to in my mind was the 2002 that's budget right. was 62,000. And, th yeah, and that thanks for the correction. Hey, the tough thing about TV is you need to, you're going to talk about 20 different topics right. today, and everyone's, well, the dates change, but that's good. You stepped up the bat and made the correction. Oh, yeah, no problem. Somebody know. calls me out, and I, and I make an error. I want to, I want to correct yeah. it. Okay, so. thank you. Uh, Wheatland's project update. You commented last time. You have another update for yeah, us? Yes, certainly. Some comments? As yeah. I mentioned, Mark Anderson and I met with the, uh, the Wheatland, uh, the Waterman Family Foundation about the Wheatland's project. There is a 60-day stay, so I can't talk too much, but I can tell you this. We've made progress. Okay. We're moving forward. The community is involved. And I mean by the community, I mean the people that live directly behind it. They they're have giving input. They're they're okay. actually at the meetings oh, with great. us. Okay. I think when we walk away with this project, I think everyone's gonna be happy and I think Queen Anne's County citizens and I think the municipality is gonna be happy the commissioner stepped in and did what they did. Good. Because the watermen are really the, the Waterman family yeah, like. are truly stepping up and looking out for this project in the county. And you're continuing to do everything you can to get citizens involved. You're listening to them so like you said, everyone when the final project comes, hey, everyone's got their input and they're gonna be fairly happy. Absolutely. Absolutely you know, could you imagine if well you know, let, let's say uh, you know something goes there that the citizens don't won't want, and we go back and do this, and then they put something there that's not allowed or outlawed per se to, on a referendum. We're going to look like fools, sure. and I don't want that for us. So it's better to listen now. Listen now, get a plan, get a strong plan, and let's move forward with that. And I think that's what they're going to do. Good, good. How about we move on? You sure. had some more comments you want to make on the comp plan, the comprehensive plan. Absolutely. I had also said, and I'm glad a citizen correct me because this TV show is watched sure. by a lot of people. When I was referring to the comp plan the last time, I was actually referring to the 2009 comp plan that was adopted that we're currently using now. That's the one that doesn't have to have a 10-year review. Right. I didn't, I didn't mean saying that Queen Anne's County has only had a comp plan since 2009. We've actually had a comp plan since 2000. Uh, but that's what I was trying to you refer were to. You were commenting on the 2009. I was commenting on the 2009. So I just wanted to make that that correction. Okay. Uh, now, a hot topic among high school age kids, also parents, uh, there's some talk about artificial turf at both Ken Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School. Where are we on that? Uh, wow, that's that's a good one, Fred. Okay. And I, and I tell you, I was one of the county commissioners that came in that rescinded what the last set of commissioners did on the 11th hour. Right. And I, I right now I'm. I'm, I'm probably 50-50 on the project right. because a lot of studies I've read, people I've talked to tell me that these type of fields are toxic to our kids. Right. They do cause cancer. There's some reports that show that they don't. The stuff I'm reading though shows that it does and that's my concern. It's not the money per se, it's, it's the kids. And if you have the National Women's Soccer League, the National Women's uh, Volleyball League, the Philadelphia Phillies, the NFL, the New York uh, Department of Park Park Services that these all these agencies are looking to get rid of these type of turfs because there are illnesses affiliated to them. There may be some health issues. There may be some health issues. 
But with that said, the studies that I, let me be fair too, because I'm, it's a little misleading what I'm telling you. Sure. The kids that would play on this field probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't affect them. It only affects the ones that play on it on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, constantly, and they, they sweat, and they're getting down on the turf, and the turf gets built up, and that stuff gets in their pores. That's supposedly what causes the problem. It's, it's recycled tires. Sure. Re tires are toxic. Right. So that's where I'm at. But can I, can I mention something? Please. Sure, sure. So I reached out, and I'm going to mention a gentleman's name because he said I could. A past okay. commissioner by the name of Dave Oles. Okay. I talked to another gentleman. Uh, I'll just use his name as Mike. Uh, he had called me because he wants me to be a supporter of these fields. Yeah. Well, we came up with an idea. Why don't we build one stadium? Why don't we build an indoor stadium, a true, you know, massive indoor indoor, whether it be made out of that uh, bubble material that they right, blow right, air into, sure, or sure. whether it be a steel structure? Why don't we build a facility, allow both schools to utilize it, one on Friday, one on Saturdays, right. but the rest of the time we can the park service and the county can rent it out. I understand that these if you build a facility like this, they will come. They'll 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 fill it up. They're cash cows. They're cash in a lot cows. Of places, yes. And and look, it's an indoor facility. Now we can have football, homecoming, all at one time inside with the weather it can be what it is outside. And this is how the county will make the money. The county would receive all the money on the gate and all the, the uh the concessions, are, the concessions will be right. done by the organizations. Okay. So the high school would make money on concessions. Uh, if you were a promoter and you put together these type of tournaments that supposedly are cash cows, you'd make money on the concessions. We'd make our money on the gates. I'm also told, now, I'm not sure. I talked to Jim Moran about this yesterday. Right. Jim Moran's willing to talk about it. Uh, but I'm told that if we did this, you could actually rent the name of the stadiums out. Sure. To like Nike or people like you can and rent they the, pay big bucks. And right? they pay yeah. big dollars to put their names on it and they pay big bucks to put their names on the field. Coca Cola, Pepsi loves to be involved in these. The National Football League has what they call a youth outreach program. Okay. And I found this out the other day. We may be able to get some money from the National Football League to help promote this. All right. So that's good news. I would love to see the county build this facility. I know the cost is going to be more than two million. It could be closer to five million, but I just think overall it would be better for Queen Anne's County to have one nice facility instead of two separate facilities that belong to the school system. And I don't think the county can really utilize right. versus so the this way, way I, more people could use yeah. it. The high schools can share. Sure. And I guess the important thing is, like you're saying, we're still talking fields. We're just looking for the best way to. Do we're it. looking for the best way. Okay. Exactly. Good. And, and it's a little bit more money, but you know what? Queen Anne's County deserves it. We need to, you know, sure. we need to be on the map, and and you know, this is one way for us to to get on that type of sports map, and it's, it's a start. Okay, so. okay. Uh, YMCA update. What's going on okay. with YMCA? Nothing has really changed since last time. We since talked. last time, my opinion is that we need this Y. I am a strong supporter of the Y. I put together the deal originally, brought it before the commissioners. Uh, that hey guys, let's donate the land, let's let them build. The Y has bought into that idea. Uh, we just rewrote an MOU. I can't discuss it just right, yet, but we're right. just waiting on the wise right. response. I'm, I'm hoping and praying that it works and we can keep the YMCA. So in it's this still county. an issue. Now we're waiting to hear from the Y folks. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, the commissioners dealt with 2.9 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Okay, sure. Uh, this last about, meeting. Yes, sure. Yeah. Well, what it is is that uh, I'm glad you asked me that. I got in phone calls. It's called critical area. Queen Anne's County in 1985 received 1,500 acres of critical area. Okay. That's area that you normally can't develop land on. Can't build, it's can't protected. Protected right. land. Well, we got 1,500 acres divided up amongst municipalities in the county. The county ended up with a certain amount. I think it was a little bit more than 1,000. The county has used since 1985, they have 539 acres left okay. to use. Now, once that's gone, that's There's gone. No more. There are There is no more. So. We as county commissioners and future commissioners have to be very careful on how you apply this. The reason why I voted to give the critical area uh, waiver is that it's in the business park. They're building two office buildings, 45,000 square feet buildings. So next it's jobs, it's, it's jobs, it's business, it's, already it's taxes, where you have a business park. And it's already in, a, in a, an existing business park. It's a smart move. So that's why I did what I did there. So, okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. But yeah, I think it, I'm glad you asked because it's important that a lot of people understand what the critical area is and all what what, what we're dealing with here. And, so. and it fits into an existing business park. Correct. So it's kind of a good spot Correct. to do it. Uh, one of the big things I know you, uh, your good friend Jim Moran's all excited about it. on Earth Day, April 22nd. We're having a local trash pickup. You said you wanted to 
Make some comments. Absolutely. And I encourage the citizens and the business owners to help out with this. This is a great idea. I think that the entire Queen Anne's County citizens can benefit from this. I'm going, to inv I'm going to involve myself. I'm going to have my companies involved in this. So we're going to be calling Jim Moran's phone numbers that he issued. I'm going to find out what's available. So I'm going to have my people available. And I'm hoping it's about 20 individuals that I can commit them all to this day. If I have to pay them, I have to pay them. But I want to be able to pick maybe one or two roads that we can cover to to do this. I think it's a yeah. fantastic it's gonna idea. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be. You can a have uh, school groups. You can have church groups. You can have individuals that will be picking up trash. The county is going to collect it. I hear we're taking it down to the crab deck, where right. it's all going to be collected. Right. Jody Schultz. And is, Jody Schultz is jumping off the second floor now. Isn't that something? And it, but it makes a good statement. It but does. we all want to chip in and clean up. The do you community. know it's sad? When I walk, when I drive down the road. And I see someone throw trash out there one day. I tell you, it burns me up. But before I was a county commissioner, you know, I'd ride by that person. You know, maybe I'd I'd I'd, I'd flip them a, a friendly suggester, okay? You know, <laughs> pick up your trash. I well, I don't know if it was that friendly, but I would do. But I can't do that now. But I tell you, I haven't seen it since I got elected. But if I ever see anybody throw out trash, I'll do what I can to pull them over and say, go back and pick up that trash. That's it's ridiculous. That's why this, this is our county. Yeah, this April 22nd thing, you guys have done a great yeah. job, and the county's commitment and working with private enterprises and schools, it's going to make it a fun thing. It's going to make it a fun thing. You just Thank need you. Mother Nature to help us out. Oh, please, Robert, okay? please. <laughs> hey, one of the things I you just mentioned to me, and I think this sounds great, uh, the commissioners are talking about where citizens can go to one meeting a month and address an individual commissioner about a particular issue or ask a question. Is this something you and I have it? Right sure. Well, yeah. yeah, you you do. Actually, it's I'm going to be introducing. Okay. I'm going to be. Are you going to do it? I'm okay. going to do it. I'm going to be asking the commissioners. I don't know how to do it, whether it be a resolution or what. Okay. But uh, I talked to a citizen the other day that watched this show and had a great idea to me. Why don't you make it so that if you do go to once a week meetings, as I'm trying to propose, why don't we take one of them meetings in that period of time? and allow for a half hour to an hour when we don't have a lot on our plate, let citizens come in and ask us, commissioners, a direct question. Okay, so they could ask you, hey, on the athletic field, you mentioned yada, 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 and you get to respond. I get to respond, whether okay. it be good or bad. Now, it's got to be civil. Can't come in there and cuss yeah, us out. And, sure. But there are other municipalities that do this, I understand, and it works, and it's personalized. It's like a private town hall meeting for all five county commissioners. Okay. And I think it's a fantastic oh, it idea. It sounds great. It sounds great. It, it will, it, it, instead of just going up there and you say your piece and then you walk away. Well, I've always got questions. When someone comes up and they, they say something before, they, I want to be able to say something, but I don't because I don't think we can or per no, se. I'm no. sure I could if I wanted to. I'm a county commissioner. But I, that's, I, I want to change it. I want you, Fred Benio, come in and ask Robert Bucky why you voted this way or why you did that, or I want to thank you, or Commissioner Anderson, can you tell me about this or tell me about That's what I'd like to see done. I think it's can. a good idea. Thanks. The worst thing I had when I was on the board is that people would come in and speak from the heart and want a question, and we weren't allowed to respond. Yeah. And you feel like saying, this per you know, it didn't make sense. I think that's a good yeah, idea. Thank Very you. good. Okay. Uh, one of the things that have been floating around the county is a career tech center. Absolutely. We used to call it in the old days vocational centers. Mm -hmm. Where are we on this? Hey, thanks for asking, Fred. Mm -hmm. I've been working very closely with Jack Wilson. You remember Jack Wilson? Yes, I remember him well. Him and an, in, an, an individual from Howard County, Maryland. This guy runs a Votech center for nonprofits. The federal government gets grants and Howard County government. He approached me about bringing over a Queen Anne's County Votech. Okay. I'm all on board. Yeah. And what this Votech would start out is electrical. So what it would be is uh, someone that wants to get electrical engineered, uh, electrical license, they'd go to the Votech Center, get their training, get what they need, get that license, go out, work for a firm locally, right. open their own business, economic development, right? And farmers, kids, students come out of the high schools that want careers in electrical. That's, that's, they can get into this type They of get it at this. Now we're gonna start out with electrical and go to HVAC, work in plumbing, engineering, and we'll work in automotive. So I'm hoping that it's a six to seven course school, but it can be used by the Tri-County area, not just Queen Anne's County, but okay. Kent County, Cecil, Talbot County students can come here. Their uh, parents, re, you know, parents can come here. Adults can go get their education right. here. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what my goal is. We can get a lot of help from this individual, and it wouldn't cost the county a lot of money to do this. Okay. And we're in the talking stages. We're in the talking, right talking stages. Yes. Okay, yes. great idea. Okay. Now we're talking about this concept, uh, incubator for business. Now, 
an old educator like me. Tell me, what are we talking about? Okay, here? sure. Well, I'm thinking of chickens hatching. Yeah, that's right. Not exactly. Yeah, right. not not quite. So, what an incubator is is it would be a building that we, the county, would hopefully own, or it would be a building that someone else we could take on a partner, like Matt Ryan would have a building. We'd take that building and we would develop office space, little cubicles, rent them out for two to three hundred dollars a month. Okay have a large conference area that they can rent kind of like an a la carte right. all from internet access you know like a business office yeah, atmosphere right. what it does is it gets someone out of their home and into a real working environment so it and you could have exterminators plumbers lawyers anybody's working and starting a business they can come to this place anybody starting a business infrastructure is the number one cost when you start a business sure. that's why people are afraid once the businesses start to grow and you start to hire employees, now you're creating a tax base for the county. Now you'll make enough money that eventually you'll go out of this incubator and go into say Jim Donatio's property. Rent a property or, or build a property. Or, or build a property in the right. county and create more economic development. <laughs> Incubators are great for, for, for counties and they're great for rev revenues and they're great for businesses. So sure. that's that's my goal, I want to see an incubator. Is this something you're going to bring up or you have brought up? I, no, I'm bringing it up. You're bringing it up. Yes, okay, sir. good. I think that sounds terrific. Thanks. So all the people out of there have an office at home and say, you know what, I want a little more step, you're going to help with rent. Help them with the infrastructure and yeah, give it a little. Give me an example. Sure. You have a lot of federal employees live in Queen Anne's County. Right. You have a lot of state employees, and you corporate corporate people, they would love to see an incubator instead of working out of their home where they don't get internet, but yet we can put them in an area that has the internet. The, their companies and the federal, you know, whoever they're working for would probably will be willing to pay them the three help to four. Help with the cost. Help with, with the, the cost. cost or pay the full cost. So it's it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Plus. If that employee that's working out of their home, they're probably getting their paycheck from D.C. or somewhere else. Now their pay would reflect that area, so they'd have to pay that piggyback tax of 3.20. So we save everybody money. Save everybody money, but the county would make more money now because of the piggyback tax. Sure. So it's a win-win situation. Good, what good do you idea. Uh, you want to do a Verizon update. Absolutely. Last time we talked about all the neat things you guys are looking into, you know, to increase our ability to right, serve the people in terms of their internet. So get that before. I asked uh, Greg Todd last week when I was here to send out a letter to Verizon that I want to see where all the towers are located and I want to see the strength of the towers and I want to see the areas that they're servicing so that Queen Anne's County can either help Verizon create a structure, a program to help get the county under wireless or the Queen Anne's County commissioners can take their own actions and bring in another firm to make Queen Anne's County wireless. Sure, sure. That's That's my goal with where it's at, the letter's out, so I'm, a, I'm hoping for a response pretty soon. Okay. Now, we talked about it last time, you wanted to expand about it. I think the public is delighted. I mean, I know I am as a citizen, I hear a lot of people talking about it. the meetings, meaning the county commission meetings, are very professional, very well organized, and it, the appearance seems to be these are five people working with a professional staff who want to get things done. They're going to treat each other with respect, and by golly, we're going to be business people. We're not going to argue and fuss and yell and scream, okay? You want to enlarge upon that. Absolutely. Right? And, you know, last time I had mentioned that Jim Moran's a big part of that. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you who else is a big part of that. It's Greg Todd. Okay. And his professional ability that he brings. I mean, he's another one that sits there and says, you know, look, you know, behind the scenes when the camera's off and the door is closed is one thing, but when that camera's rolling, you know, he wants to see a level of respect up there. And he's keeping you guys by flip. I mean, I'm amazed, Robert, when I watch it on TV, that book he has, oh. okay, how you're flipping the pages, you got to know a little bit of everything. You yeah. can't fake it, right? Because that camera does not let you fake it. No, right? it doesn't. And he keeps you uh, moving along with Absolutely. Okay. But you did notice the other night, if you watched, you'll mm -hmm. see that Greg Todd himself, Myself and other commissioners started getting tired there <laughs> because these meeting. are marathon meetings. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I go back to my once a week meeting thing here. I'm not saying it's every single week. I'm saying March, April, May, we should have once a week meetings. Yeah. That meeting last Tuesday could have went from 6 o'clock to probably 7.30, 8 o'clock yeah. instead of quarter to 11. Yeah, it was a long night. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. That just goes to show you my case for once a week meetings. Yeah. We're, we're pretty much doing once a week now. You get tired. I, I, mean, I If I can, I remember the Board of Ed meetings. It gets past 9, 9.30. I'm sorry, you're physically and mentally tired. You're exhausted. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. I had meetings all day long that day. I was I was spent at 9.30, 10 o'clock. I just couldn't concentrate anymore. 
I wanted out of there. I really did. I just was like, I, I'm, I'm no good here right now. I'm just a, a man sitting here in the seat listening to someone talk. And it, <laughs> yeah. it did the county no benefit to having me there, yeah. basically. And I can't speak for the other commissioners, but if you watch the video, you can see people retired. Retired. Yeah, just well, get tired. The original compliment, you guys, are, oh, I do think the professionalism of the meetings is great. And they keep it up. We're just going to have to cut them short or something. We got to. Say if you're all right. You, we started with budget and you wanted to end up with budget. You want to make some final comments about the work being done in this year's budget? Absolutely. Yeah. This is budget time, as a lot of people know. Every year, I guess, county commissioners bring a project that they want to see done in the budget. Sure. Well, a set aside the YMCA really isn't a budget issue. I, you know, to me, what I want to see is what they call the low sap for the firefighter. Okay, I, well, you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah. Sure. LOSAP, as you know, we have a full 100% volunteer fire department. Right. If these these guys, if they were paid, let's don't even go down that road. They're volunteers. Right. They 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 this make is nothing. people like you and I when they hear this siren, they run to an ambulance. And they, men and women who run to an ambulance, run to yes, a man. And I I cannot tell you how dedicated these individuals are. They are so dedicated to their job, and they don't get anything for it. They have to literally put in 30 years to get what they call LOSAP. LOSAP, mm -hmm. and they have to, and they only get 150 bucks a month mm -hmm. after 30 years after of service. After giving 30 years of Sundays and two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, all I mean, stuff. come on, think about it. 150 bucks a month for 30 years of service that I, I can't even, I can't even fathom it myself. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what I want to do is, I want to see that low sap taking from a buck 50 to 200. Okay. And I'm asking the public to help me at that. To be honest, it's a budget them. issue. Sure. It is, and it's it's going to cost a couple dollars, but it's worth it. It's 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 an investment in our future. The firefighters are losing interest right now. The young people are not becoming They're not fire getting the membership, are they? No, they're not. Because there's nothing to why would you want to donate your time if you're not you're not getting an incentive yeah. broken? There's an there's gotta be some sort of incentive putting your life on the line every single day, one, and then volunteering that time. Uh, there's gotta be some kind of incentive. So to me this would help them bring in people a little bit of retirement sure. package a little bit absolutely of someone maybe my age your age sure. too that wants to put in some time as a retiree 200 more dollars a month would help sure like exactly sure. and i think they're taking it to 25 years with this new low sap program okay. so you, you have to put in for 25 but it's going to cost the county a couple of dollars but we can invest over years to get us caught up it's kind of like an insurance so you sure. you buy into the program it costs a certain amount for the premium but it's only like a hundred thousand dollars a year after that so it's okay. not a lot but to me, it's well worth it for the firefighters. And these are men and women that when our house is on fire, we have a heart attack. I don't care if it's 1 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, holiday, snowy. They're there to save our lives, save our property, and our children and our families. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Seems like a pretty good investment, doesn't it? I think it's a fantastic. Can you imagine if we didn't have the volunteers okay. anymore? What would, we, what would we do? Well, I'll tell you what we'd do. This county would spend, I guarantee, I bet you, it's about 350 to 400 volunteers. We'd probably have to staff more full time. These guys make 60, 70 thousand a year, With not doing benefits. benefits. And everything else. Yeah. So I, I could, I could see it costing the county 10 million plus a year. Plus, we'd have to own all the firehouses, all the trucks. Take care of the equipment. Take care of the equipment, which they do now. They, re, they basically don't receive a lot of money from the county. I, if you look at their budgets, I mean, it's amazing, but. To me, this is just a little step to help them out. Good. So it's a nice way to help people who help us twenty four seven. Absolutely, right, right? absolutely. Well, but anything else we're about done? Anything else you wanted to comment that we haven't listed so far? Hey, I think it would be a nice thing if you, if you don't want to tell it. You don't want to, you're about to help one of the employees. I mean, I think it's pretty nice. I'll kind of skirt around it without mentioning names. Or Absolutely. Anything. You're going to get in the car tomorrow. We're filming a day early uh -huh. and driving, what, almost a thousand miles uh -huh. to help one of our employees Move. pick up furniture and come back. That's You want to tell that's a nice Absolutely. story? Absolutely. Sure. So, you know, again, to me, um, you know, it's about money. Yeah. Uh, the county helps people move, you know, financially. So I said to, uh, I asked Greg Todd and the individual, I said, one, can I help? With this to save the county this money. one of our employees moving from Atlanta to yeah, yeah. I, and trust me I'm not doing it because I want to do it I'm, I'm well there's a part to it I like the individual I'm doing it also because we can save the county some money sure. go down there we'll pick it up with my truck we'll pick his stuff up and we'll drive it back and save the county forty five hundred dollars I think they give them five grand to move but why hire a moving firm to do all that when you got someone 
can step up like myself and you know what I'm willing to do it and I want to help so uh, you take credit for the money I'm gonna give you credit for just being a nice guy Thanks. And doing it. move, all... look every time I move I almost get a divorce right right <laughs> you might save this guy a job and a man hey can right? I say something else this <laughs> is real right. important I went to the 4-H park on Sunday yeah for, talk with, about speaking uh, to all those people yeah. yeah so I went to the I, biggest crowd I've ever spoken to you told me 500 people uh, at least yeah. but there was a huge amount of individuals there and the 4-H park organization is unbelievable the people the kids, you know, the the mannerism that these kids had, I blew my mind away. They're, they're polite, they're in organized activities, they, you know, they look good, don't they? Dress well. Oh well. my goodness gracious, yeah. these are your future politicians, your right. future leaders, man. These, the, the, the 4-H Park, the 4-H organization is fantastic. There's an individual there, and I don't know his name, okay. but if you call the 4-H Park and you ask, and I'm asking everybody out there listening, this kid took on a project last year to revamp their playground. The playground that they have now was built in 1950. Okay. He took on a project to make it modernize, mo modernize. Put new types of... Put new technology. Whatever, whatever, whatever the, the word is, I can't yeah, get it yeah, out. Yeah. But Steve Wilson got me sick from his cold Tuesday, so <laughs> I've got a head cold. He took on this project. He's only raised 10 grand. He needs another 20 grand to do okay. it, and it's got to be done this year. Right. I think by September. I'm hoping that the public hears this, reaches out to 4-H Park, Finds out who the gentleman is. I wish I had his information. I wasn't. And prepared. we'll get it for a future show. And we'll get it for next week. Yes, but help out this guy. What he's taking on is so tremendous for 4-H and for our community. I, I, it just goes to show you the characters and the people that we have in this county. So always just, people helping, aren't they? Just always people. Helping. Another thing that blew my mind was going to that 4-H park and seeing the parents and these kids. You know, just. The makes community. you feel good. glad you got involved. In it politics, makes me, you know, it makes me glad I became a county commissioner for them okay. for that type of reason. There, yeah, exactly. So, well, Robert, look at thank you for thank covering you. all bunch of topics. Safe trip to Atlanta. Thank you. I think that's a kind thing you're doing. No okay? problem. Thank you. And we want to remind everybody you're watching QAC TV and you're watching Bucky's report. And Commissioner Bucky, I'm going to get a picture. You're not sure, about Bucky Dent, great intro to making a great play, and we'll use that as your logo or something Man, like that. You got again. it, brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our time is up. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And we're going to see you next time.